Ladies and gents, uh, good afternoon. I'm Ekon Bojim Beg. I came into the program in 2012 and was lucky enough to be selected as the Officer Commanding 17 Squadron, which was the first F 35 test squadron for the United Kingdom based at Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, I was fortunate enough to put it through its um, operational test procedures, came back to the UK at the end of 2017, and then given the privilege of commanding RF Marum, which is the UK's sole F 35 operational base and was head of ops and training and disappointingly was promoted out of it last year uh, <laughs> into capability strategy role but i'm very privileged to be able to have that background and use the knowledge of the future to inform our future programs thank you sir so uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, kick this off uh, for both you gentlemen uh, you know today's uh, today's environment uh, security environment is changing more than ever uh, would you mind talking about why we need the F-35 in the environment and what it will bring to the table? Uncle, we'll start with you. Thank you. Um, so what it will bring is the F-35 and the whole fifth gen concept. Like if we want to talk about uh, that, we need to, if you want to frame it, let's talk about what what the fifth gen is. It's uh, uh, low observability. Uh, a huge amount of sensors, uh, active passive sensors uh, that we are taking uh, into this scenario. Uh, there is the net, the link that, that um, to share information, and that is the essential key to provide uh, information superiority, knowledge superiority, uh, and sharing that information is now the key. Uh, the enabler. So the um, what you gain from having the F-35 or having a uh, fifth gen asset is not the asset itself. It is the, the capability of, of the jet to integrate with the other platforms. Being uh, same generation from other countries or being fourth generation, uh, that is the, the added value that you bring into into scenario. Perfect. Uh, sir, anything to add? Um, from a threat perspective, uh, J20, China, it's Jim Jet. Um, you've got SE57, Russia, with a, uh, a huge desire and intent to use it both itself and seek privilege um, and influence through exports. The world is a fifth gen world right now. We need to bring our fifth gen credentials to bear. One is deterrence, so fifth gen assets need to be incredibly capable, but should things go worse than that, then we need to be able to fight it. So this is a, it's a fifth gen world right now. I cover an air-to-air -air environment, but actually the bigger potency is sometimes A to AD, anti-access aerial denial, which is these countries just building belts of SAMs to just push you away. And fifth gen is our access to that. It gives us the ability to be able to take the fight to them at a point of our choosing, use the ubiquity of air power, uh, and not let them permit when we desire to fight. And for me, that's what we have invested so heavily in this technology for. And I want to reiterate what Pumbu has said. Um, stealth is a very small part of it. You know, the information domain is what fifth gen is really about. The rush is fusion architecture. And certainly from my test world when I grew up, uh, if you went in and explained what your sensors were doing, as you would in the fourth gen world, you would have been metaphorically asked to leave the debris. Um, you've got to talk about what your information levels were, what buckets of information you had in yourself, and your, your formation members, and more importantly, what information you had in the adversary as well. And that's really where I felt I became a fifth gen pilot, was when we started talking in those levels, what Fusion was doing, as opposed to what the sensors were doing. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. I appreciate it. So, Jim, back to you on this one. Uh, Ten years ago, you delivered BK1. Um, can you talk us through uh, your thoughts of how the lightning capability has developed uh, over this past decade? So, BK1 was initially dropped off by Lockheed Martin into a pooling agreement with uh, the Marine Corps. Uh, we had a select cadre of British pilots that were part of the Marine Corps, as the Italians are now, um, where we flew very early variants called Block 1B. I was incredibly lucky to be the commanding officer, so I chose 
uh, my preferred part is going to collect VK1 onto me. And, <laughs> and went to Cherry Point to collect it. And as I touched down at Edwards Air Force Base, we were the first nation outside the US to operate the jet under our own sovereign jurisdiction. So that's uh, a fully certified, UK certified jet on the British military aircraft register, which was a, a tremendous capability because we became members of the fifth gen club. Um, that jet was a fairly basic F-35, but there is such a thing. It had a series of limits, and this was because we were so early in the test phase of it, uh, and we had nobody declared initial operation capability because that was not the program intent. But what we were given was unfettered access to a jet that historically frontline pilots would not be given access to, particularly operational tests. We were able to put it through its paces in the most demanding environment possible, well beyond what I hope any war would look like. And that gave us one information so that we worked out areas where we actually needed to improve the jet, because that's why uh, you develop these things, which is far earlier than you've <coughs> done on the previous platform. Uh, we were also able to prioritise that activity to say, okay, okay, this is the key area that we need to get after, because you can't do everything at once, albeit we were incredibly impressed how few things we did need to improve, but that prioritisation was incredibly important. Um, but what we have now is a fundamentally different jet. We've got three F or many variants thereafter, um, or subsets of it. And it, when I went back to flight RF Marum, the, the jet was a completely different feast. Um, it, to say it swept up is an understatement. To say it was Putin is an understatement. And I think one of the most profound things for me um, was, was the fact that with the gear up, it was almost impossible to fly to the ground on the current software load. The jet takes control. The jet checks the pilot's okay, put the throttles in the right position, fly away. And that's that level of automation that really is the surprising factor. Uh, and when a jet does that, you think what the human inside can do, and that is to become more immersed in the tactical warfight. And for me, that's the progression we've seen through 1B to 3L. Thank you.